We are starting a new mini-series on using Photoshop for interior design. We will be showcasing techniques and workflows for creating photorealistic visuals of interiors, which can be useful even if you are not into interior design. In this first episode, I will explain how to work efficiently with patterns in perspective. I love doing interior design mock-ups or visuals in Photoshop and today I'm going to show you one of the coolest techniques which is easy to learn but it's actually a quite advanced and complex method. So this is for creating repeated patterns like here the floor having these floorboards showing. Uh, you can see it's actually not the original one, I replaced the original one. But to create something like that and something that you can easily adjust later on that's what I'm going to show you. So we are going to use a smart object with a vector shape in perspective and on top of all of this a pattern and a gradient overlay layer style. So let's see how it works. It's actually much easier than it sounds. So when I start working on a visual it usually looks like this. So that's the photo I took of the space and then first of all I started cleaning it up. I got rid of a couple of things that I won't need and then I start adding all these details and you can see I keep everything very structured and I even have additional options that I can turn on and off and see what works best. It really helps to decide how to do the interior design of this space. The floor is what we are going to concentrate on. So I'm going to just turn off all the details and as the floor and I'm going to turn off this layer just so you can see how I do it from scratch. So the first thing I would normally do is to use the pen tool and set to path mode or you can also use it in shape mode whichever you prefer. I actually prefer it in path mode and it's important that you need to make sure it's set to combine shapes. So as long as you have that on you can start drawing. I always start drawing from outside and then just roughly for now I'm going to identify the edges that I need to keep to. So just under the skirting we go around and follow the line that we need to fill in. And you can see I'm not really bothered about being too precise. Because what we can do is once it's closed up the whole shape we can always tweak this. So for example if I zoom a little bit closer you can see this line needs to go further out. So I'm using the direct selection tool and simply dragging that point out and then I just quickly check like this can go in. And when you select something you can even use the arrow keys on the keyboard to push it in to maybe somewhere around there. Also this one can come up to maybe here and so on and so forth. I would be able to refine this further but I think it's fine. Maybe just this last point here I'm just going to drag out a bit that way. All right so this defines the plane on which we will need to create the pattern for the floorboards. So what I'm going to do next is to turn this path into a vector shape. The way you do that is by going to the little yin yang sign at the bottom and choose the solid color adjustment layer. So once that's created we can click OK. I'm just going to set it to gray for now. It doesn't really matter what color it is. Click OK and you can see that is already there. So the next step is going to be to create another vector shape. But for this one I'm just going to use the simple rectangle tool. And again this one I use as shape and I'm going to keep everything the way it is and click and drag to define the area on which I'm going to apply the floorboards. Uh, let's say something like this. Usually I just cover the whole canvas with it and then once that's created we can find a texture that we can use for the floorboards. Now I already have two prepared here. I have a brighter one and I have a darker one. So let's start with the dark one. I'm going to use command or control A to select all and then I choose edit and define pattern. So that is going to create a seamless repeatable pattern. Of course it's important that the image that you use needs to be already prepared in that way and that's a whole separate technique which I am going to show you in a separate video. For now let's just say we found this actually I found this online so you can also search for it. The same thing if you just search for wood 
texture or floor wood texture, you will find something similar to this. I'm just going to call it dark oak. Um, it actually could be walnut, so I'm not going to call it oak. So I'm just going to call it dark wood floor and then Okay, so now that's saved. I can even close this image. I don't need it anymore because now what I can do is to go back here, double click on the layer, the rectangle layer, and then from the pattern overlay, I can find the most recently saved pattern. And with the scale option, I can start increasing or decreasing the scale of it. So that's a really handy feature which you can use to adjust the size. And once I click OK, we will be able to start working with this. Now you can see when I zoom closer, it looks much more detailed. Just from a little bit further away, it doesn't look as detailed. But now what we can do is to turn this into a smart object. So the pattern overlay is going to be inside the smart object. And there is a reason for that. Actually, I'm going to create a duplicate just so I can show it to you. So in this case, for example, if I use this layer and I wanted to use maybe a distort option on it, holding down command or control, you see that it's not going to add perspective on the pattern. So the pattern is going to just stay flat two dimensional. So instead of that, I am going to turn this into a smart object. So right click, convert to smart object. And then I can use the free transform tool and holding down the shortcut command option shift or control alt shift. You can create perspective distortion and then I can just simply without the shortcuts drag it down again, drag it further back in, I can start applying the perspective distortion. Most of the time I would just hold down command or control and start dragging the corners into place. So here again, I will drag that out, drag this out as well, and align that corner into that corner up there. I'm just going to make sure that this aligns here. And the cool thing is that you can always drag this further out if there's more space you need to cover. And it's going to still work quite well with the perspective. So if you want to see this in context, you can also reduce the opacity and you can make sure it aligns well with all these lines. So when I use the free transform again, I can just drag it up a bit and I'm paying attention to the lines of the floorboards and the lines of the skirting in this case. So I can just make sure that this aligns a little bit better. So you can see how those perspective lines are following the skirting here and also here. I think that looks quite good. So now if I set the opacity back, then it will work quite well. But let's not forget that we created that vector shape, which we will be using as a mask. So now that I have these two objects or layers on top of each other, all I have to do is to use the alter option key in between the two and click to create a clipping mask. So that way the shape we created at the bottom becomes the mask and this smart object is clipped onto it. Before we continue, I just wanted to let you know about our creative membership program. For a small monthly fee, you get access to over 200 hours of Adobe certified online training courses. Master all the tools and skills needed to become a professional graphic designer or illustrator. As a pro member, you will get mentoring from me and my team, access to webinars, student forum, and creative briefs to help you build an outstanding portfolio. Pro members can also download the project files for all of our YouTube tutorials. Sign up at yesimadesigner.com slash memberships and start your free trial today. And now let's head back to the tutorial. That's how quick and easy it was to set this up in perspective. And the cool thing is that if I feel like this floorboard actually in terms of scale is too big. Maybe the actual elements of this floorboards needs to be smaller or bigger. All I have to do is to double click on the smart objects thumbnail and within that double click on the pattern overlay layer style and just adjust the scale. So let's say we need to make it smaller. I can just reduce the scale, click OK, save this. It's important when you are within a smart object, you have to go file, save. And then when you switch back, you see already it updated. The other cool thing is when you are making amends within a smart object, 
you can stay in the main composition and just use undo redo quickly see the difference between the larger and the smaller floorboards so i'm just going to keep it on the larger one i think it works quite well but not only that, you can also have multiple textures used in the same composition and you can experiment with whether darker wood or brighter wood will work better in this space. So the way I would do that is similar to before. I just find a texture that works as a repeated pattern, turn it into a pattern. So I'm going to do the same thing and I'm going to call it light wood floor. And now it's saved, I can close this one. And we need to go back into the smart object. So again, double click on the smart objects thumbnail. And then within this, I can either create a separate layer or add another pattern overlay. In this case, I think I'm just going to create a duplicate. So Command or Control J, and then double click on this one, change the pattern to this bright one click OK and now you can see I can just simply click to show the bright one or show the dark one underneath and I can even call this one uh, light dark and because they are uh, vector shapes I could even change the color here just so it's easier for me to find which one I'm working with so that can be the dark brown and this can be the brighter one Maybe something like that. So I can very quickly see which one I'm working with. And if I save the smart object, don't forget, you have to update the smart object. Then we will immediately see the updated version here. Now you can see this pattern wasn't really seamless. So here we can see a clear edge. So that's why it's very important to first create a seamless pattern. And that is the one that you would save and then use in a pattern overlay. But even like this, it's not that bad. We can still get the idea of how this would look like. So once again, I can use undo, redo and compare which version I prefer. Or if I need to show this to a client, I can show very quickly, present it within Photoshop, the changes. There's one last thing I would do. And normally that would be the gradient overlay. So to make this look more natural, and I think it's going to look better on the darker version, we would need to represent somehow light. So light is obviously coming or flooding in from the garden and from the top. So this part would be much brighter than here further inside the room. So what I would do is to do this outside on the smart object with a gradient overlay. So the way you do that is double click, get to the layer styles, choose gradient overlay. And what I normally like to work with is the radial option. And normally I would reverse the default uh, gradient. So that way the bright details are inside and the darker details are on the outside. Now you can see it's already set to multiply, but I just set it back to normal so you can see it better. So this is actually how it works when you use these settings and you can increase the scale for it. Now imagine this is like a reflector light. So I want the light to be around there on the top. Now, if I then go into the blend modes and choose overlay, that creates this effect, as you can see it. And of course, the light doesn't need to be as harsh as this. So we can reduce the opacity to something around there. Now, even if I just turn this on and off, you can already see how the whole thing looks like. But if you want, you can also start amending the colors. So instead of black, you can change the color in the gradient to maybe something dark brown. And that's going to create a nicer effect, in my opinion. And even the white can be amended to something that's coming from the outside, maybe a bright blue color, something like that, which would represent the sky. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to keep that white. And if I click OK, I can increase the overlay effect. You can see how that starts to look more and more realistic. So again, before gradient overlay and after I apply it. And the best thing is that, again, everything is non-destructive, which means if I go inside the smart object, I can still turn on the other texture, the light wood. And I can see that together with the gradient overlay here, it's obviously too harsh. So we can just reduce the intensity of it to something like that. Or maybe we can even change the blend mode to multiply. I think in this case, that would work better. 
something like that. But because everything is already in place, it's much easier to amend it. So that's all I wanted to show you in this video. And I'm just going to turn back on all of these other elements. So if I put this underneath here, we can turn back all the other details. And that's our final result with the other texture that we created in this video. If you are interested to learn more about interior design with Photoshop, let me know in the comment sections below and I'm going to do more tutorials on this topic in the future. Thanks a lot for watching. Like and share this video if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified whenever we release new videos. Click on the link on my right and start your membership today to get access to over 200 hours of training courses and personal mentoring by me and my team of creative professionals. Have fun learning guys and I will see you in the next one.